everyone. Welcome to AgriVision for you. In this video, we are going to discuss the solution for XCG, that is Food Technology Gate 2022. The first question uh, for food technology was question number 132. So starting with question number 132, we'll be discussing the further question. So the first question was related to which among the given options truly depict the line one and line two in the figure below with respect to the effect of heating process on the food. So X axis is a process severity. That means the how severe the process is and uh, Y axis denotes the value. So uh, in line two, line two, the slope of the line two is constantly decreasing. Uh, it is decreasing the value for line two is constantly decreasing. So as the process severity increase, we can say in case of heating process, let's just discuss in terms of temperature. As the temperature increase or the process severity or the time of processing increase, then in that case, that will definitely lower the quality because uh, the heat liable components would be destroyed if we are increasing the heat processing, the severity of the heat processing. Hence, option, uh, sorry, the line two would be quality for sure. So option A and option C can be the correct answer. Moving ahead, coming to option uh, line one. So in case of line one, it increases, it goes on increasing, starting it was uh, zero and then it goes on increasing as the process severity increases. So the options can be safety or yield. We cannot determine yield by the process severity. I mean, yield would depend on many other parameters. So we are not very sure about the yield, but safety, yeah, safety can be increased. It uh, will surely increase when the process severity increases. Hence, op line one would be safety. As option A is correct. Safety goes on increasing as we increase the process severity for a heating process and the quality depreciates or deteriorates when we uh, increase the temperature or the time of heat processing. Hence, option A would be the correct answer for this. MCQ question. Now moving to question 133, that is the second question. It says homogenization of milk leads to disintegration of fat globules by turbulence or pasteurization. Pasteurization has no effect on the disintegration of fat, fat globules. In case of homogenization, so option A would be wrong. Turbulence and cavitation would be the right answer because there are many mechanisms which explain uh, the subdivision of fat globules that are occurring during the homogenization and one of them is cavitation, the other one is turbulence. So cavitation, what happens? Um, the fat globules are shattered as a result of collapse of the vapor bubbles that are formed in this region because of high velocity and low pressure. Because of the high velocity and low pressure, what happens? Air bubbles create hote hain, that may shatter and uh, collapse due to which the fat globules shatter and disintegrate. Hence, cavitation um, is responsible. Uh, one of the theories proposed that cavitation is responsible for the disintegration or the subdivision of the fat globules during homogenization and turbulence also affects the disintegration of fat globules and uh, pressurization wouldn't be that much effective. Uh, and because specialization is given along with pasteurization, so this option is not correct. So that means option A, B, and C are wrong. Option D is the right answer for this MCQ question. Now, coming to the next question, that is question 134. The lowest water activity supporting the growth of Staphylococcus aureus is in food under aerobic condition is. So this it is it's a bacteria. For most of the bacteria, the water activity that is a Optimum water activity for most of the bacteria is greater than 0.9. That means approximately 0.9 and greater than 0.9 uh, is the optimum water activity for most of the bacteria. But in case of Staphylococcus aureus, it is uh, nearly 0.83 to 0.85. Hence, the answer would be 0.81 for Staphylococcus aureus, which is a bacteria that produces toxin and causes foodborne illnesses. So 0.86 is the lowest water activity that is optimum for the growth of Staphylococcus aureus. So option B would be the right answer. Coming to question number 135, cultures used in industrial production of yogurt are, we need to find the value. Okay, so this is the MSQ question that came for two marks, I guess. 
No, uh, this is the MSQ question that was for uh, one mark. We just need to find out the cultures that are industry uh, that are used in the industry production of yogurt. So the two cultures are Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus uh, Lactobacillus delbrueckii vulgaris. So these two are the right answers. Ye hum log the option A and option C that is Lactococcus lactis and Leuconostrum mesenteroides are also uh, lactic acid bacteria. But they do not, uh, they are not used in the industrial production of yogurt. The two cultures that are used in combination in the ratio one to one are Streptococcus thermophilus and Lactobacillus vulgaris. So option B and C are the right answer for this MSQ question. Now moving to question 136, uh, in a dairy plant spray drying technology is used to produce whey powder. That means the whey liquid is spray dried to produce the powder and the rate of spray drying depends on. So in case of a spray dryer, what happens, we atomize, we use an atomizer. An atomizer is used to produce the droplets of the liquid. Here we are talking about the whey powder. So the whey liquid would be atomized and converted into small droplets and uh, air passes from beneath and uh, converts these droplets into powder form. It means it evaporates all the water that is present in it and converts it into powder forms and this powder is collected um, underneath which is then again transferred to a central cyclone separator in order to separate the depending upon the mass or the particle size of the powder. So hence, uh, this is the basic technology that we used in spray drying. So the factors that would affect it uh, would be the temperature of the incoming air. Yes, it would definitely affect the rate of spray drying because if we lower the temperature, then uh, the rate of spray drying decreases. Uh, the higher the temperature, the rate would be increased. Now, the shape of cyclone separator, the rate of spray drying. Spray drying wouldn't be affected by the shape of cyclone separator because cyclone separator is just used to separate depending upon the particle size of the powder that is formed. So the rate of spray drying wouldn't be affected. So option B is not the right answer. This is also an MSQ question of one mark. Uh, then uh, the third option is diameter of the whey droplet. Yes, it would definitely affect because uh, jitna zada aapka bada diameter hoga, utna kam rate hoga. So uh, hence we are using the atomizer, right? So as to produce the diameter, uh, so as to produce whey droplets, which can be easily dried with the help of the steam that is, or the air that is being passed. Uh, so option C would be the correct answer. Coming to option D, that is the heat transfer coefficient of hot air. Yes, it would affect because jitna zada heat hoga, utna, um, uh, the heat transfer coefficient, that means the type of air that we are using would also affect it. So hence heat transfer coefficient of air would affect it. Um, therefore option A, C and D are the right answers for this question. Coming to question number 137, that is related to parboiling of paddy. So here we are talking about the results of parboiling of paddy. Parboiling is a three step process. It's basically soaking of paddy so as to increase the moisture content. So the initial moisture content of paddy is nearly 13 to 14%. On soaking, it is increases, uh, this moisture content increases to 30% approximately. Then after soaking, it is steamed. Steaming is done. Steaming is done, which increases the moisture content to approximately 40% or 39%. And then the last step would be the drying, in which it is again dried to 12 to 13% for safe storage. So the three steps involved in parboiling are soaking, steaming, and drying. Uh, parboiling is basically done so as to increase the yield of milling, milling of rice. So as to, so this for parboiling is done in order to increase the yield of rice milling also because we are steaming uh, it. So the nutritional value of the rice would increase because all the uh, vitamins, which are water soluble, which are present in the husk, would move because we are using steaming and soaking, but move with the help of water into the interior part of the rice and hence the nutritional value would increase. So if you're talking about the options that are given over here, option A, that it increases the milling losses. No, because the basic principle of power boiling is used to increase the yield and decrease the milling losses. Hence, option A is not correct. In case of option B, it is increase in the nutritional value of rice, 
विच इज करेक्ट बिकॉज जो भी हमारा वाटर सोल्यूबल वाइटमिन होंगे इन द एक्सटीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द राइस दैट इज हास्क एंड ब्रांड वुड विद द हेल्प ऑफ वाटर एज द वाटर सोक्स इन स्टीप्स इन वट हैपन्स कम्स इन टू द इंटीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द एंडोज फॉर्म ऑफ द राइस एंड हेज द न्यूट्रिशनल वैल्यू ऑफ द राइस वुड इंक्रीज uh therefore option b is correct coming to option c that says increase in the head rise recovery yeah because we are increasing the yield percent increases on par boiling of paddy hence the head head rise that means which is not broken which is complete uh, i mean there is no losses in this pura complete grain length hame milta hai in case of head rise hence the uh, par boiling leads to increase in the head rise recovery option d is increase in the broken rice percentage that means hamara jo rice grain hai that breaks uh which is not true because uh, in case of par boiling the yield increases the yield for the head rice recovery increases hence a uh, broken rice ka percentage would decrease so option d is wrong therefore option b and option c are the right answers for this msq question this was also an msq question for one mark going to question 138 that is an nat type question 100 kg paddy is dried from 18% wet basis to 13% wet basis water moisture content the amount of water removed from the paddy uh it is a must balance question okay. 100 kg of paddy was being used so let's just draw the diagram for this that is 100 kg of 18% moisture content paddy goes into the dryer and it leaves this paddy leaves with 13% moisture content and water is removed from it in, from this dryer so we need to find out the amount of water that is being removed so um, if we do the component balance first we'll do the mass balance over here so mass balance would be feed is equals to water plus jo hamara product nikal raha hai so feed is 100 kg amount of water we have no idea about the amount of water and the uh, product that we are getting we don't know the value of it now uh, we have done the mass balance now we'll go for component balance so in case of component balance hum log solid content wale ka component balance karenge so it will be equal to uh, 18% 18% is moisture therefore 100 minus 18 would be 82 so we have 82% solid in case of um, the feed and we have 100 minus 13 that is 87 87% of uh, solids in case of the product so it will be 82 divided by 100 into feed it will be equal to 87 divided by 100 into product so feed is 100 hence it will be 82 divided by 87 into 100 would be equal to product so we can find out the uh, kg of product that we are getting it will come around uh, 94. Two five kgs of product we'll be getting. That means the dried paddy would be ninety four point two five kgs. Hence, from the mass balance, we can find out the amount of water removed. It will be equal to hundred minus the ninety four point two five, which is five point seven five kgs approximately. Ah, uh, we have to round it off to one decimal place, so it will be like five point seven kgs. Hence, five point seven kgs of water is being removed from hundred kgs of paddy, which has eighteen percent moisture, to produce ninety four point two five percent or ninety four point two five kgs of paddy, which has thirteen percent moisture content. That means the paddy is being dried from eighteen percent to thirteen percent moisture content after removal of five point seven kgs of water. 